What's up guys? Alright guys, so what I wanted to do today was something just a little bit different. <laughs> most of them make videos, mostly outdoor stuff, some shooting stuff, some gun reviews. Um, but I wanted to do something a little different. I wanted to talk about uh, guns and politics, current politics that's going on right now, particularly gun control policies. You guys might have seen one of my videos I talked about the assault weapons ban of 1994 and how um, I compared that through an analysis of what Biden has talked about uh, in regards to what he wants to do You know, once he's in office. This was put forth before he was in office, obviously. Now he's in office. And so I have, um, I did that. You can check my YouTube channel, Remnant Outdoors, about that. Um, but I want to kind of dive in on some things that are going on right now. There's something that's been put through in the House. I think it's HR 127. That's the most infamous one that was released in uh, early January uh, by uh, an individual from Texas. Go figure. A Democrat from Texas. And it is a beast. It's a beast of a, a proposal, man. It has prohibitions, restrictions, bans. Uh, a lot of limitations, it makes you get insurance, it makes you get all sorts of different types of things. And so, um, check that video out. I do have, and what we're going to do a little bit today is kind of go through um, some things. I guess we can go ahead and start on that and plan on it, but uh, we can go ahead and start here. But if you look at Biden's website, as you can tell, he still has the stuff about, you know, Donald Trump and donating at the, in the bottom. I think that's kind of funny. But... Um, he talks about the plan to end the gun epidemic and all this other stuff. The interesting thing, though, between 1994 and now, because Biden was instrumental in the uh, assault weapons ban of 94, they always talk about you know limiting deaths and helping people in minority populations. But the real targets of what they're, no pun intended, what they're targeting during these bans are assault, are, uh, assault style, semi-automatic sporting weapons. Uh, something that looks like a military weapon, uh, but is, you know, simply, you know, something that looks similar to it, isn't necessarily mimicking the, mimicking the features, and there's no select fire, there's none of those things like that. Um, but of course, these legislators who have no idea what they're talking about are the ones proposing all these bills anyway. Um, things like, and just to give an example, Something that was restricted in 1994 was something that had a uh, threaded barrel, something that had um, a uh, pistol grip instead of having just like a, a rifled grip on there. Uh, another thing that was restricted back in the day was something that had a telescopic stock because, oh my gosh, if you could adjust the length of pull, that must be super scary and military-like and you can go and hurt a lot of people. The crazy thing is these bands don't affect lethality. They mostly just affect the responsible gun owners, uh, people like you and me who want to just live their life as a free citizen and use them for target shooting, use them for uh, teaching, which I do a lot of training and, instru and instruction, uh, people who use them for hunting like myself, people who use them as a last resort for self-defense and to protect my family. You know, I don't want to ever use a weapon. Lord willing, I never will ever have to use a weapon against another person. But if someone breaks into my house and I have no other choice, I'd rather have that versus using my two hands. I do trust my two fists. I feel like I'm decent with them. But if they have a weapon, they probably are going to get the upper hand. But, you know, things like this, $200 tax stamp per weapon, mimicking when people buy silencers, things like that. Um, uh, $200 tax stamps per magazine, per year. Uh, it just, just doesn't add up. There's a lot of things in here that don't reduce homicides. The majority of homicides, a large chunk of them, are suicides. And then if you get to the next level of just actual, uh, well, let me put it this way. Most of gun deaths, let me make sure I state this properly, are a lot of them are suicides. If you look at homicides, somebody killing somebody else, then the majority of those are done by somebody with a pistol, okay? It's not an assault rifle, as they like to term it, semi-automatic rifle. Um, but, you know, if someone's committing crime, it's usually a violent felon that is not able to purchase a gun legally anyway. And they'll use a pistol most likely, you know. But a lot of these bans, the assault weapons ban in 94, as it was said before it went into place, they said, look, this probably isn't going to uh, stop violent crime. And after the 10-year sunset period had ended, 
the analysis from left wing and right wing groups said, yeah, it, it might have helped to reduce mass shootings, uh, which are very uh, infrequent anyway. Not to you know put that down, but those don't happen all the time. But typical, like your typical gun violence, a homicide, uh, those were not necessarily decreased. The rate of those didn't necessarily go down. And in cities like Jackson, cities like St. Louis, where you know you, if you're talking, if you really want to talk about reducing gang violence, then a lot of these things that's in these documents just aren't it. So let's just go through this real briefly at a high level. I think there's like 41 objectives in here um, last time I counted. And there's a lot. I mean, it's it's very meaty. It's it, This, what Biden has proposed is different than what some of the uh, bills that are going through the House right now. And so it's like they're hitting you on all sides. And they have the trifecta. They have the White House. They have uh, the Senate. 50-50, right? There's 50 Republicans and 50 uh, Democrats, and Kamala Harris breaks the tie, which we've seen over the last couple of weeks. They had this thing called the Votorama, uh, where the senators proposed a bunch of, I think it was 41, ironically, amendments, and where it was 50-50, Kamala broke the tie, I think, all, you know, 100% of the time in favor of the Democrats. So they have the trifecta, the White House, the Senate, and obviously they have the House. They've, they've had that since... Uh, before the last uh, midterm election. But, you know, they have things like holding gun manufacturers accountable. It's like holding a car manufacturer accountable if someone gets in an accident with their car uh, and that person was drunk. Let's say the person was drunk and got in an accident in your car. Oh, well, uh, sorry, manufacturer, but you have to cover that and pay for that. That's kind of strange. Get weapons of war off our streets. Like I said, most homicides are done by pistols, not by semi-automatic rifles. If you want to talk about lethality, the most lethal, one of the most lethal things is a shotgun. You know, something that you know you you basically hunt with. You could do some skeet shooting with. That one of the most basic of guns, very inexpensive, are shotguns. Those are way more lethal than some of these semi-automatic rifles that shoot these small bullets. But you know, like I said, the folks writing this have no idea uh, really what they're talking about. Uh, and you, you're not going to get weapons of war off your streets unless you start kicking doors down. Because a lot of this stuff is for fanfare anyway. But let's just take get weapons of war off our streets. I've heard politicians use that a lot. Bernie Sanders, uh, Hillary Clinton, uh, Joe Biden. They've been Joe's been using that term for for decades. Um, but what does that mean? Okay, so let's say I'm a felon and I commit a crime with us, AR-15, AK-47, or a handgun, right? A pistol or revolver. If I commit a crime and I'm caught, then guess what happens to that weapon? It's seized and I never get that back. It's, it's taken by the government uh, or the, you know, the police and either it's destroyed or a vast number of things happens to it, <clears throat> that weapon. But I don't get it back, right? If I commit a crime with a weapon, then I'm not getting that back, okay? Period. So you're already doing that component the only other thing you could do to get weapons of war off the streets would be to kick people's doors in. That's not good publicity. That's not going to make good media. That's going to really rile up folks against you. So this is really just rhetoric. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, the weapons of war thing, they really associate semi-automatic rifles with weapons of war, but those aren't really used in crimes. So it's just a big uh, kind of a fluff job, so to speak. They do want to ban the manufacture and sale of semi-automatic uh, and high cap uh, weapons or high cap um, magazines and weapons that accept high cap magazines. Um, if you look at HR 127, I want to say H, I want to call it HB, but I think it's HR. If you look at that 127 that was passed early, or sorry, that was proposed earlier in January um, of 2021. Uh, it talks about banning anything that can accept anything more than 10 rounds. And you could still have a semi-automatic under that, but you have to get additional training, potentially additional insurance, potentially a sign off by the Secretary of State. Uh, and it wasn't too clear when I read it if that's your own state Secretary of State or the Secretary of State at the federal level. Uh, and what happens if they don't like you or they don't think that you need to own a gun? There's all there's just so many different things, so many different layers. So if you just want, and and I know I'm kind of skipping ahead here, but uh, like I was trying to mention before, they're kind of hitting you from both sides. Biden has laid out what his plans are within this 41 or so objectives, 
and then the house is continuously pushing through different types of bills. Uh, but this one is banned from what Biden wants to do, just outright ban the manufacture and sale of assault weapons, high capacity magazines. Uh, it talks about regulate existing assault weapons. Um, and in other places, not necessarily here in this document, but in other places, he talks about registering for $200 a piece. I mean, it just makes it really inexpensive. The person who's just like me and you just wants to be left alone and doesn't want to use guns for anything nefarious. We're going to be the ones paying the price. The criminals aren't, right? You know, they're just going to continue doing what they do. Buy back assault weapons and high cap magazines. You know, uh, that's going to be interesting. What's the price going to be? It's going to be the market price. Is it going to be the average around seven hundred fifty dollars, seven hundred eight, you know, seven hundred to eight hundred fifty dollars, uh, as far as what I see the you know pre-pandemic was like the average going rate of a entry level AR, and so are they going to give you market value? Are they going to give you two hundred dollars and give you one hundred dollars? That's not fair, um, because I think in Seattle they gave, I think from what I heard on a website was less than market value. And that's not right. If you're going to be buying something that somebody saved money for back, uh, at least give the market value. But I doubt that's going to happen. Uh, same thing with the magazines. Reduce stockpiling. This one was really funny. I, I read a little bit more about the reducing of the stockpiling. What people are saying here is, oh, well, um, you can only buy one gun a month. Most people don't have the money to buy more than one gun a month. So what is that really? That's a fluff job. You know, that's part of this. Uh, sounds good to the person who's not a gun person, but it really doesn't mean anything. You know, there's a whole bunch of other required background checks. It's silly. Every time you buy a gun, whether it's at a store or a gun show, you have to have a background check. Okay, I was in Louisiana a couple of years ago, well, quite a few years ago, and um, yeah, I had to have a background check even at a gun show. Okay, this was like 10 years ago. This was actually over 10 years ago. But even then, they ran you through a background check before you bought a gun, okay? Uh, if you are buying a gun uh, here in, in Mississippi, or if you go to, wherever you go, you have to have a background check. If you go into a store, background check. That's the name of the game. You, so I'm here, I think there is, uh, what Nancy Pelosi said a couple of days ago is that she wants to introduce two new background check bills. The only thing that that's going to do is really nothing. If you just say, okay, at gun shows and the stores, you have to have a background check. Well, that's already happening. The only thing that could be different is if they say you have to have a background check if you buy a gun from somebody else like your neighbor. Well, how can they track that? How do they know that transaction is going through? They said, oh, well, with cars... You have to, uh, you have to go through all these steps, and people know, and you have the, de you know, the, the not the deed, what's the word, the title, and all the stuff is transferred. That's different because you have, first of all, a vehicle is a much lo larger investment, uh, and there's depreciation and all these other things involved that you don't get into with firearms. Um, but it's just, it's just really silly because you have insurance and you have uh, all these other property and tax implications which you don't have with the firearm. Uh, but that's what Pelosi and some of these other folks are trying to use as justification to do background checks with a private sale, as they're called. But, yeah, I mean, how are they going to track that? I can go down uh, down to downtown somewhere. Uh, well, I'll say West Jackson somewhere. And I could talk to one of the homies and get me something for like $125 right now. How are they going to track that? If they're tracking that, if they're able to see that, then they should be able to stop some of these crimes from happening. You know what I'm saying? So let's keep going. Require background checks, that's silly. Uh, close the loopholes in federal background system. There are no loopholes. Uh, closing the boyfriend loophole. So if you buy a gun for somebody else, that is illegal, okay? It's known as a straw purchase. And in gun stores, if they think you're buying a gun for somebody else, they will say, I'm denying your background check. I'm not going to sell you this weapon, even if you pass your background check. I'm not going to sell it to you because I'm going to get fined as the gun store owner. So th there's just a lot of fluff in here. Um, I want to see what else is, is kind of interesting. In the online sale of firearm and ammunition. Now that to me could be something they could do. It's very easy for the government to be able to track what places are selling firearms, you know what I'm saying, online, and then cut it. So that to me... Uh, could be serious uh, and I talk about a lot of these things in the video that I put through but 
I just kind of wanted to go through this again uh, and kind of highlight the things that I thought were, were, were red flags as we've moved on from pre-election to post-election. Some things have changed. Adequately fund the background check system. You know, gun, responsible gun owners really don't care. As long as there's no built-in mechanism to say, oh, you've already bought one gun and you've already bought this for this month and oh you've already bought one gun for the year as long as something like that isn't instituted you know responsible gun owners don't care okay um I'm trying to see if there's anything else here before we move on put america on the path to ensuring 100 percent of firearms sold in america are smart guns seriously biden like he says we have the technology um i don't think that we have the technology to do so even if we did, you know, there's a lot of folks out there that don't use those electronic fingerprint safes because like as far as their last resort, like if their gun, their go to gun, if someone was to break in, a lot of people don't use the fingerprint safes for those. They might have them throughout their house for other things, but some people aren't 100 percent sold because what if you put your fingerprint on your gun, your smart gun, it doesn't recognize you and maybe you're, you know, for whatever reason and you can't use your weapon the one time you need to really use your weapon, right? That just to me is, is a joke. So there's a lot of things like that that are, um, I, I, for that reason alone, I put it that way. There's a lot of silly things in this whole whole document, but there's a lot of uh, uh, nefarious, not nefarious, there's a lot of holes, as Kevin Lee likes to say, there's a lot of holes in some of Biden's proposals. Uh, so anyways, I encourage you to go on Joe Biden's website and check out his gun safety page. A lot of this stuff is lip service. A lot of stuff is actually already in place, like the background checks, but I highly recommend you go in and check it. The straw purchases, that's already highly illegal. Ghost guns, ghost gun is like when you, you know, either you buy some pipes uh, and you basically buy a pipe that's right around the diameter of a, a shotgun shell, for example, and you basically convert that and add a few more basic pieces you could buy at Lowe's or Walmart and convert it to like a slam fire shotgun. Uh, that is something that is pretty simple to do, but how are you gonna track that? If I go and buy a pipe and a the pipe in or pipe fitting or whatever, uh, and then a nail and a few other pieces that are like $3 a piece, and then I buy a shotgun shell, how do you know that I have that gun? You don't, you don't know that that is a gun, I'll put it that way, because it may be, I could use it for several things. How are you gonna say this is a gun? How do you know that I'm buying that? And then 3D printing, uh, it, maybe you could ban people who put on the internet how to 3D print a lower, an AR-15 lower or something like that. But again, you know that's something that people could probably get around pretty easily. So there's a lot of other things in here that I think are pretty, um, pretty, pretty powerful now that we're in the post-election. Uh, address the, e e the epidemic of suicide by firearms. Now, this is something that I mentioned a little bit before. It is a serious problem, suicides. Um, I just don't know, I mean, what is he gonna do? I mean, a lot of the stuff that he has in here is about training health staff and staff and making them more aware and et cetera, et cetera. But this, if you have the big, one of the biggest chunks of gun violence is suicides, then why have this little small section and all you're doing is oh let's support let's support well what, what you doing what are you doing for me you know what i'm saying so there's a lot of fluff in here there's stuff that i don't think is feasible or possible like i said check out the video that i got on my website on my website on my youtube page uh and you could you could check out some more now most recently like as of a couple days ago uh biden was talking about gun bans again so he had been talking uh, about executive orders and energy and all this other stuff that he's been focusing on over these last month, just a little over a month since he's been in office. I think the most executive orders in like two week period ever. Um, but regardless of how you feel about that, now he has just shifted his focus to guns, right? The whole administration, you got the house and now the white house shifting their focus to gun control. And that's, that to me is scary. You know, after the initial panic of Biden getting elected, we just now are seeing guns coming back on the shelves. Like you could look at my favorite website, Palmetto State Armory, and you could see right here, they got some deals, man. It's still President's Day um, as of the recording of this video, but they got some, 
some AR-15s that are available, pre-pandemic prices in the $700 range, Wyndham Armory stuff. So it's, it's pretty good. They got some lowers, they got some uppers, lowers for like $200. Things have just started coming back and then bam, Biden hits us with this. So I believe these are going to go away very soon. So if you don't got what you want, make sure you get it ASAP because as, as you could kind of see, um, they're talking about stuff. They're, they're, they're maneuvering to start blocking things. And then, you know, we, we want to, as responsible gun owners, we don't want anybody to die as a result of a firearm. Uh, but we, we also, at the same time, do not want our rights infringed upon it. We just want to be able to protect our families, use them for sport. Uh, I compete because ammo is so expensive and so hard to find, I can't even compete. I wanted to compete over the last couple of weeks, really over the last couple of months, I wanted to compete. And I couldn't because ammo is $34.99 a box at certain local gun stores. So it is what it is, man. Um, hopefully things could change soon. But if you don't have what you uh, wanna have, man, uh, don't get left out. There's a narrow window for you to kind of get in on the game. So I'm gonna go ahead and just stream a little bit. I'm gonna continue talking about um, my thoughts about gun laws and all that kind of stuff. I really, really, really feel for the people who are new gun owners in this time period because, man, there's just like hardly anything available. Stuff is just now coming back on the shelves and then they hit us with all these gun control stuff. It's just tough, man. It's tough because, gosh, if this was me right before I, I started working full time, so a little over a decade ago, um, I'd be pretty, I'd be pretty heartbroken because number one, I wouldn't have a huge selection of stuff to choose from. I kind of have to take what I, I can get. And, and then secondly, um, you know, I wouldn't be able to really go out and practice. You know, I'd find some ammo here and there and, you know, $50, 50 box or 50 rounds in a box. Um, and that'd be all I'd be able to get, you know, cause you just can't afford it and you can't find it. And there's a lot of limitations. So even if you can't afford it, you can buy one or two boxes. I was at Academy yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. And they said that I could only buy two boxes of ammo. You know? And I didn't even find the, the 9 millimeter ammo that I was trying to get. So I just highly recommend, guys, uh, if you see something, you know, if, if it's right with your budget, um, do the, the work beforehand, the responsible work of checking in your, on your budget first. Uh, and so that when you do see something, you can go ahead and grab it. Ask your wives and all that kind of stuff first too. Um, luckily, I married a country girl and she she's, she's kind of on board with me as it relates to some of this stuff, so. Whoa! Especially uh, in election year. can't run baby you can't run so one thing you guys are gonna learn I'm pretty competitive and I do like to talk some trash so I'm gonna I'm, I'm working on that you know a little bit but I'm usually better when I talk trash um, but I'm not really playing seriously right now I'm just just playing and talking uh, one of the things that one thing that I would uh, certainly recommend uh, if you are a person that's either a YouTuber or you're just a person who... Whether you're a YouTuber or, or whatever, um, you know, whatever social media you are using and you're on, I would be very, very, very cautious about posting what you got online. Because if you look at, I think it's HR 127, they talk about um, restricting semi-automatic rifles and you having to uh, go through this insurance plan. I, I think the eight insurance was $800 plus 24 hours of training on top of the 24 hours of training you have to get for a general license to own a, a firearm. Um, and so what I'm saying here is you don't want to necessarily let everybody know, hey, this is what I got, this is what I got, I got this and I got this. Because if Biden wants to impose this $200 tax per firearm, per magazine that has he has talked about, then uh, you're going to be screwed because they're going to know, oh yeah, you got this. And you got Reloading. What are you guys doing? Reloading. So you don't want to necessarily just 
you know, show your hand. And you don't want to necessarily be shooting some other friend's gun because they're going to think that you got it. And if, uh, if there is a confiscation, which hopefully there's... Where's that guy at? Oh, gosh. If there is a confiscation, then they're going to know, okay, you know, John Doe has X, Y, and Z. And, you know, um, another interesting thing about all this stuff is I highly, I, I would, if I was a betting man, I would bet. One second, let me get this guy. Maybe that was him. Um, I didn't see if it said revenge or not. Another interesting thing is I don't know I have to reload. if I don't know if you ha if you have something if you have a firearm. No, let me go this way. If you have a firearm before a Enemy gun ban goes overhead. through, I don't know if you're gonna get grandfathered in. If you look at the assault weapons ban in 1994, Enemy from what I've read uh, and studied on it. What you had, if you had a semi-automatic rifle, it was grandfathered in. They called it a pre-ban. A lot of folks who were in the gun community heard that term before, pre-ban. Um, so you should be straight. That's another reason why I'm telling folks, get what you need to get now before um, before too much time expires and a, some, a, some type of a restriction or ban goes through. Because if you've got it now, if, similar to the assault weapons ban in 94, your gun is grandfathered in. Whoa. Then you, you may not have to pay a tax on it, and you may not have to register it. Oh, but for sure, after some type of ban or restriction goes through, then you try to go in and, and buy a new gun then for sure you're gonna have to register. Uh, the government will know that you got it most likely if you're able to even get it at all. So that was one of the cap, the good caveats of the assault weapons ban. If you could find any type of silver lining is that there was uh, the ability to you just go into it with what you got. A lot of people didn't make a lot of noise on it. They didn't want the government to give any reason, have to give the reason to the government to take it in any way. So a lot of people just laid low but man, millions and millions of semi-automatic rifles and other types of firearms have been procured uh, since that time. Like over the last 10 years, millions of, of guns have been bought by the free citizens of the United States. And, excuse me. And so, uh, so many more people would fall under that and it's, it's harder to, to kind of disguise it. I mean, some people are gonna be out shooting, hunting, with them, and if a ban's in place and the government's like, look man, uh, you have to register this and this and this, and they're gonna be able to get you. So, you just gotta be disciplined. You know, some people have talked about, you know, I'm not gonna talk about strategies for uh, hiding your guns and stuff like that, but I'll just say it, I'll say it once and I'll continue to say it, man. Um, get what you need to get now, you know, before it's too late. So I'm gonna talk a little, just video games, uh, but guns in video games. I'm gonna, since I have shot an SKS and I have shot AK-47, I will bring that loadout out. I'm just gonna talk about these two guns. I'm gonna switch it to semi-automatic mode. I haven't shot a fully automatic AK yet, but I think that Modern Warfare does a great job. Oh! I think they do a great job with the realism for both the SKS and the AK. I feel like they gave, I feel like they gave the AK accuracy a little bit beyond what it actually is. Was I killed by my own teammate? I was killed by my own teammate. I think they gave it a little too high marks for accuracy. Um, the SKS is relatively right where it needs to be. I'm getting killed with my own teammate. Anyways, um, gosh, that's frustrating. But yeah, the SKS is, is a little bit more accurate um, in real life, obviously, because the longer barrel, 
um, and because it's a little more heavier, uh, I think the barrel is more denser. What? Look up. <clears throat> we can win this. We just did not have to. But yeah, they did a pretty good job with this. But I will tell you this. I don't know about the ratings, but I will tell you with the AK-47, it feels like the AK hits harder than the SKS, which in reality, it wouldn't because I think the muzzle velocity is, is definitely higher on the SKS. Oh, I was trying to aim farther out and I got clipped by the dude who ran up on me. But yeah, the SKS would be shooting your 7.62. It's just the same bullet, but it'd be shooting it at a faster velocity. And so it's, it's going to be more powerful. The SKS, uh, you know, if you really want to... It's probably really close, but they're going to hit about the... That guy wasn't... They're gonna about to hit about the same uh, force, but as far as speed, you're gonna get more speed out of the SKS because it's a longer barrel. And it's more accurate, but overall, they did a pretty good job with this game, making the guns true to what they are. They feel like, and when you feel, when you shoot it, the recoil response, the time it takes to get back on target feels pretty realistic. So I do like that. I can't hit on that for that too much. Um, I didn't play much with the Air 15, but it's very accurate and it's very powerful. I feel like it's as powerful as the AK-47, um, which we all know. You, know. you got a 22 caliber bullet versus a 30 caliber bullet of the AK. The AK is going to be a little more powerful. Now, keep in mind, my KD ratio is not above one, but I cannot. At least I, I'm working on it, talking and playing at the same time. Um, that's not something I necessarily do. I'll trash talk and play, but not necessarily talk and play. Uh, so, it is what it is. Well, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I might do some more just straight up streaming in the future uh, while talking about some current events. I really, really, really do care about the gun community. I care about gun rights, obviously. Uh, because I, I spent a lot of time instructing people. I don't think I've ever charged for instruction. And I've, dozens and dozens of people um, is, is how many I would say I've instructed. Zero incidents, uh, zero injuries. Praise God, it's been very safe. It's been very fun. We've been able to keep it lighthearted with a focus on safety, focus on mechanics, and taught some folks how to get a little bit better than uh, they were if they've shot before. So, you know, for somebody like me who likes to go and do those types of things and then, of course, compete. One of my dreams was becoming the best in Mississippi and then being one of the best in the United States and beyond. Uh, I just can't go and compete right now because, I mean, $35 a box for a uh, full metal jacket, 9 millimeter is, is just insane. I mean, that's like the same cost. Uh, I mean, I think that's more than if I was to buy, like, a box of 308 bullets. I'm pretty sure it is. 20, 20 rounds of 308 is probably less expensive than uh, 35 bucks a box. Normally, you know, outside the election and oh yeah. I'm gonna use let's use AR-15. We'll talk about that a little bit. They did a pretty good job with the AR. I have the magnifier. I like how you got that, right? You got your little EOTech. You put your magnifier on. And when when you have your magnifier on, it takes a little longer to acquire your target. Then uh, when you just have the EOTech. So that was good. They got that right. Definitely got it right. But it still takes a little longer with the EOTech. It takes a little longer than I would like for it. Let me go ahead and switch to semi-automatic mode so I could talk about it. No, dude. So I could talk about it as if it was a, uh, you know, your off-the-shelf HR, eight off-the-shelf 
AR-15 that you could buy in your local gun store. I was going to say, you know, big sporting goods, but you can't buy it there anymore because they are uh, anti-Second Amendment. Man, I'm getting destroyed. But yeah, I think that they do a good job with the AR. Actually, I want to change to another. I'm going to change to this one. This is more common. Just straight up red dot. This one that I got right now is a little more souped up. And, uh, I don't have mine. Reloading. If I had a gun, you know, I, I don't have any guns. It's the gunman ass, but I don't have mine set up like this. If I had one, my imaginary one. Okay. All right, so now I got the more common AR. So I think it's like a 18 inch barrel maybe on this one. Dang, I wanted that. Um, but you can see it's kind of like a straight up red dot. But a lot of people have like a Sig Romeo sight. Um, some people have uh, TRS 25 Bushnell like myself. No, dude, I keep touching this person. But they keep killing me. Freaking joke. Um, yeah, so uh, there's a couple different little red dot, cheap red dot sites out there. But, you know, most people have those on their ARs. Tango down. Enemy Wilson deployed. Yeah, it's on. This is my favorite spot right here. Hit somebody. Oh, um, that dude just keeps getting me. You know, I would like to see them have an odd caliber AR in this game. Whoa! That's Dragon Breath right there, baby. Very unpractical, but looks really cool in the video game. Yeah, get some. I would like to see it kind of like an odd caliber, like a 6.5 Grendel. That's what I would love to get, a 6.5 Grendel upper or complete AR or something like that, just to see the difference and see how it would translate in the game. I mean, it's basically like a 308 bullet, flat shooting, supersonic still at a thousand yards type bullet. You know, dangerous, dangerous. I, I would love to hunt hogs with that round. Flash out! But, you know, I'm playing hardcore mode to where you kind of just touch somebody and they go down. It really doesn't matter how deadly, how lethal your gun is, right? It's all about can you touch somebody. And if you touch them, they go, you know, they go to sleep. If you touch them, they got to respawn. Yeah, don't try to do that jump. Jump slide with me. Enemy at the back alley. Dude. I thought he kept on going right around that column, man. He just stopped and hid. I, I think that was a good tactic by him. But, you know, like I said, overall, I feel like th they do a pretty good job of keeping AR true to actually how it is in the handles in the, in the real world. What I don't think it's a good representation. I mean, for some guns it is, but if you play the casual mode, like the regular team deathmatch, that's not hardcore, with when you get all the HUD and you get all this other stuff, it's a little bit easier to, you know, if someone's shooting at you and you're getting hit, it's easier to escape because it takes like five shots sometimes to kill you. In those cases, some of the guns are realistic when it comes to 
lethality, and some more. You can still hit somebody with an AK a couple of times. I need to pay attention a little bit better. Uh, like I said, it's very hard for me to talk and stream and, and game and all this other stuff at the same time. But I'm learning to do a little bit better. I could talk to a decent degree, but it, it, my gameplay is going to suffer. Unless I'm talking trash, which I probably should just start doing. One of my favorite weapons in this. Flash out! One of my favorite weapons in this game is the 4570 government. It's made me. This on. Oh gosh. It's made me consider it, man. I saw one like five weeks ago. No, it was maybe. Might have been two months ago. I saw one at a local gun store. And man, it looked good. But I just couldn't justify it. You know what I'm saying? I'm not hunting with a 4570. If I'm gonna hunt with a lever action, if I'm gonna buy a lever action, it might make more sense to get like a 357 or 3030 or something, you know? Something where you can get ammo a little bit more accessibly. Getting you a 4570 government, it'd be really awesome. Shoot a shoot a big old round, but the ammo is so hard to find. There, I got him. Got him. Yeah. Oh! I got hit with a plane. Do they have a gunship? They must have a gunship out. Gosh, I'm getting destroyed, man. Enemy at the shipping area. So, what else do we got to say about the Second Amendment? And how that is being encroached upon. You know, it's funny because, you know, Biden was one of the largest proponents of the assault weapons ban of 1984, right? And now that he's president, you know, there's no reason to think that he he's gonna let up. Now, one interesting thing to think about is midterms. I thought that was a dude chilling there. Midterms are coming up, right? So some of these senators and representatives know that there's a lot of heat. And it, you know, there's a lot of rights being infringed upon. The XL pipeline extension was canceled. They got all this other stuff in the mix and people are being disgruntled. When I say people, I'm talking about citizens, regardless of who you voted for. They feel really disgruntled right now, simply because some promises that were made um, aren't being kept. As a matter of fact, their own interests are being uh, encroached upon and, uh, you know, being done dirty for lack of better terms. And so people are disgruntled. And if you put down some gun control legislation, because don't forget, a lot of first time gun buyers, mostly Democrats, bought guns for the first time because of the pandemic. People were scared. They didn't know what was gonna happen. Uh, and so they went ahead and they bought their own guns for themselves. And they said, let me go ahead and get this and this and this and get some ammo, get some training. There's not much else to do. Let me buy a gun, let me go out to the range. And man, it's crazy. Like. A lot of Democrats bought guns, so if they push some certain types of legislation through right now, it could be dangerous for them, for those folks who really want to uh, get reelected. And that's what it's about. It's not about helping people. If it was about helping people, you wouldn't go after AR-15s and military-style semi-automatic rifles. You'd go after something else. I mean, if you're going to be real about it, go after pistols, right? Go after pistols. Uh, and obviously, I'm not advocating for that, but that's what kills the most people is a pistol, okay? Go after something that's actually, you know, gonna cause some damage to folks in large chunks, but they don't care. They don't care about jobs. They care about re-election. They don't care about 
you know, there's a lot of stuff that they don't care about from a social perspective, finances. We know that that's true. If you look at uh, the debt uh, and the, the nation's uh, the deficit, uh, but man, they care about being reelected so they can continue to maintain their positions of power uh, and resultantly profit off of that. Um, so I still have to say some of them might be a little bit nervous when it comes down to signing in a gun control legislation because there are so many new gun owners that are uh, that aren't just conservative you got some independents you got some democrats that are now new gun owners they're gonna be pissed off if they say well you can't own this you gotta pay 200 dollars for this and 200 dollars a magazine oh those magazines they hold more than 10 rounds you have to sell those back to the government oh no i know you paid 33 dollars for that glock magazine uh that, that is uh bigger than standard well guess what we're gonna give you five dollars for it you know people are gonna get upset and i don't think that they want to deal with that especially after the the major debt that was just added because you got all these other things that are major priorities right now with the pandemic uh and so on so it's likely come on, come on, reload Re ah dude didn't reload fast enough Anyway, I say all that to say, you know, it's likely that we won't get really much of anything, kind of like in, in 94. Oh, out. In, in 94, uh, they didn't... They, that dude just keeps coming back. They didn't get everything that they wanted. I don't think they're going to get everything they want now. It's possible that they do. But it's also possible that they don't. You know what I'm saying? Be advised, UAV is bingo fuel. Do we uh we take him to the house right now? <laughs> Dude, you can't miss that jump, bro. I gotta watch my back, that's why I gotta keep looking up here. Whoa. So anyways, that's, it's tricky because some folks aren't going to want to vote for something that they know is going to be an automatic vote out of office type thing. But we'll see what happens, like Dana White likes to say. We'll see what happens. You know. Then kill the guy. So, you know, um, it's not common knowledge, but one of the reasons why they had enough votes for the assault weapons ban in 94 is because Ronald Reagan wrote some letters to the folks who were on the fence, and those folks ended up signing the assault weapons ban because of those letters from Reagan. Isn't that crazy? You would think that Reagan was a big, you know, prototypical conservative guy, when in actuality, you know, he, he did a, quite a lot. Dude, can one kill? He did a lot uh, for uh, the opposite of giving gun rights to the citizens. Before he was president, I think he was either mayor or he was governor. Um, but he proposed gun legislation in California. He was like one of the first to do it in the modern era because of the African Americans were, you know, marching. They felt like the government wasn't protecting them, so they said we're going to open carry. And Reagan was like, "Oh, well, I don't like this. It's uncomfortable." Yada yada. And he enacted gun control legislation. I got killed. Oh, I got killed. He got killed the same time I did. So he enacted gun control legislation. And it's like, dude, all you need to do is sit down and talk with these folks and let them know that, hey, the police are, have, you know, going to be... 
police are gonna be uh, serving you just like we serve and protect everybody else. You know what I'm saying? If he would have did that, he wouldn't have had to go through the police of enacting gun control legislation. And so, anyway, um, it's been happening for a long time. Biden's been a part of it since the 90s. A lot of these key players like Dianne Feinstein and these other folks, they, they're key players in the game. They've been part of it for a while, but they just haven't educated themselves really. Well, it looks like I got one of the highest uh, KD ratios. They didn't they haven't educated themselves really. They just have this burning desire to strike down the gun rights of folks. And it's just it's crazy because some of these same folks who want to limit gun rights are responsible citizens use guns themselves. Diane Feinstein admitted that she used to carry uh, a revolver with her. I think it was uh, illegally. She didn't have a permit uh, when you know she was going back and forth to the hospital with her husband or whatever. It's like, you guys are hypocrites, you know? So that's the thing that, that really bothers me too, is just that these folks who are at the elite level, the rules don't apply to them. It's not like, you know, they might make some legislation, but it's not like they have to live up to it. Plus they have armed guards and they live in these, you know, places where there's cameras and all this other stuff. So I don't think it's fair. I don't think it's right. And hopefully none of this stuff comes to fruition. But in the, the event that it does, like I've said before, get what you need to get now before they put some bans in place because what you already have will likely get grandfathered in if you look at the assault weapons ban of 94 as an example. Well, that's about it guys. I had a good time. I hope that um, you enjoyed this. We're probably gonna do some more of this in the near future. Um, and uh, you know, maybe I'll talk about some other fun topics. I'll pick some weapons on here. And it'd be great, like this is a 4570 right here. It'd be great if I could enemy you know, buy up. one or, you know, borrow one or whatever and then talk about it at the game. But, you know, right now, I don't have the luxury of buying a 4570 gun because I'm not, because I'm not going to be able to afford the ammo and if I even find a 4570 government, just, ooh, gosh, wild times right now, but... If you guys do like these style videos, I'll probably do some more. And, um, you know, I just love to play games. I love to shoot guns. I could do a lot more game playing than gun shooting with the way gun economics are uh, in modern day uh, times. So, we'll see. This is a tough level. It really is. I mean, this is kind of one of the newer maps. But you have a lot of areas that have good protection. Like, this whole area, there's a, there's a respawn. It's a respawn area back there. And if I'm running around, turning the corner, someone could respawn behind me, and I, you know, I don't have anything to cover myself. You know what I'm saying? Same thing going this way. Get out of here. 4570. You know, one of the cool things about it is, though, you could just kind of... From where? I didn't see him. You could just set up on a corner right here. Set up on that corner right there, and uh, let me see if I can just do it instead of talking about it. You can't really do it here, you have to be at this corner. You can set up right here. Well, you can cover what's straight ahead and what's to your right, basically, you have a 90 degree angle. But I keep getting killed as I try to talk about what I'm trying to explain. Got him. But yeah, you could shoot this way, and then as they come around this way, you got it. So, you know, you got a little strategy going on. Oh, no, I knew I pulled the trigger. I knew I pulled it before I got shot. Dang. Um. And this is just a danger zone, because they could launch cluster strike back there, kind of pin you in.
Yeah, it's a tricky area. It's a tricky map. I haven't really got the hang of it. Enemy cluster strike incoming. Flash out. Of course, in like a real conflict, I wouldn't be rocking around with a lever action. But it is dope. I mean, it makes me think, man. You know, you play these games, especially if they're really realistic. You know, it lets you know, man. You don't have to have standard AR. People talk about survivalism and all that kind of stuff. You don't just have to have an AR. You can do some damage and protect yourself with a variety of different firearms. Heck, if all you got is a pistol, you could do that. Ooh. Got killed by my, I knew I was gonna get shot. I knew I was gonna get shot by my own dude. Let's roll around with a pistol. And see what we can do with this pistol. Just because of... This will show you if you have a rifle, you do have an advantage. Because people, I think some people are like, why well, can't you just walk around with a pistol in war? I remember I used to ask that question. I was like, well, they're both, you know, are dangerous and deadly, right? And why do police, you know, or why does SWAT have, you know, short barreled rifles? Got you. Instead of pistols and stuff. Well, you could kind of see it as you, you walk around with this little pistol. You just feel like it's weaker. You know what I'm saying? You could feel how weak it is compared to. You. The range isn't there, and obviously, the sights. I mean, it's it's not for pre precision, but I'm laying them down with it though. That's three. I'm actually not doing bad. Second on my team. Okay. Let's go. Oh, I was trying to get greedy. I was trying to split. I ended up shooting right in the middle. I wanted to get both of them. I was trying to lead into it. All right. Let's go. I'm getting comfortable with this pistol, though. <laughs> Man, my, my death ratio is going up with this. Yeah. See, it just lets you know the difference between a rifle and a pistol. See? You can lay them down. You just that range factor, that power factor, man. And this is basically the EBR-14? That's basically like a um, M1A. Or M1. M1. M1A? M1A. In the head. Scout rifle, you know? Scout style rifle. Gosh, man, I'm just grateful that I have never had to go into warfare before. Um, people keep asking me, are you in the military? No, I'm not gonna even try to take credit. Those dudes are for real, for real. I would not wanna go into combat. Unless, you know, I was forced into it, you know? So hats off to our military and our armed forces. Salute to those guys and girls. They uh, put their lives on line for us to live a life of freedom and to protect the Constitution. I'm, I'm just uh, certainly very proud of them. Well, I think that's all I'm going to do for tonight. Thank you guys for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, I certainly do want to make sure that I am putting out content that people want to, to hear about. And so I want to do more of these. Just talk about news and, and go through some of the, the legislation that's going on, you know what I'm saying? And you know, update folks with, with what people are saying and uh, you know, uh, give a little bit of 
information on what I'm hearing with some of my folks in local legislature, as well as with the groups, you know, some of the grassroots organizations that are connected on the national level, might give some, you know, a little bit of tidbits here and there from what I hear from those guys. So uh, thanks, guys, for watching.